So let's take a look at where we left off previously with uh, the concept of acids and bases, and specifically with aqueous solutions of an acid or a base, the business end of any acid is hydronium ion, and the business end of any base or solutions of acids and bases here is hydroxide ion. In pure water, we found that both the hydronium and hydroxide ion uh, are naturally 10 to the minus seventh molar because water can act on itself in, a, in pure water to give vanishingly small concentrations, about one ten millionth of a mole per one liter of hydronium and hydroxide uh, uh, spontaneously. And we find that uh, not just in pure water, but in any solution, be it acidic or basic, that the, uh, the product of both the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations is always 10 to the minus 14th. Thus, if we have a situation where we know the hydronium ion concentration or the hydroxide ion concentration, we can very easily uh, calculate the other one based upon this very simple equation. But we're going to now look at a, a better way of expressing uh, the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide ion in solution. We, up to this point, we've been looking at vanishingly small numbers as concentrations. And these vanishingly small numbers can be converted into a logarithmic scale, which is uh, much more pleasing to uh, be able to express. And this is known as the pH scale. So it's a simpler numerical way of expressing acidity in a solution or basicity, whether a solution is acidic or uh, basic. Now, many of us have, uh, have heard or see commercially or whatever the concept of pH, the pH of a solution, the pH of your fish tank, the pH of a watershed, and so on. But we're also going to be looking at uh, a very similar uh, uh, reading known as POH. They're essentially saying the same thing, but they're just looking at, at it uh, from, from different angles. One, the pH is looking at from the angle of the concentration of hydronium ion in solution, whereas the POH scale looks at things under, under the auspices of, a, uh, of, of the hydroxide ion con uh, concentration. So the pH scale uh, is, is a logarithmic scale uh, wh where the change of one pH unit corresponds to a tenfold change in acidity or basicity. What that means is, if you remember when we were looking at concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide, uh, we would uh, each sort of uh, number on the scale was a tenfold increase in concentration or decrease, uh, depending on which way you went. Those tenfold concentrations now that we're in a logarithmic scale uh, correspond to so one single unit. So looking at, the, uh, at, at the, our, our figure uh, right here, we see that just like we had on one, on, on the top, we had hydronium ion concentration before, and on the bottom, we had hydroxide ion concentration in the previous lecture. We have a very similar scale right here now, where it's not hydronium and hydroxide concentrations, it is pH and pOH. And just like hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations are relatable by that uh, uh, the, their product always equals 10 to the 14th, we're going to find that pH of a solution and its pOH uh, are also relatable like that. We'll start with pH because that is the more uh, familiar uh, to us, if you will. And we find that pure water is pH 7, pH 7, or if you like, pOH7, because they're both 7. We may have again heard that. pH7 means neutral. What that ultimately means is that it is pure water, where there's 10 to the minus 7th molar concentrations, one ten millionth of a mole per liter of solution of both hydronium and hydroxide. But through the, uh, through, through the calculation, uh, which, which we'll show you in a moment, it comes out to the number 7. So, Here's how they're related. If I know the hydronium ion concentration, looking over here on the left, there is a hydronium ion concentration, I can calculate the pH by taking the negative log, log, base 10 logarithm of that concentration. Uh, and it's that simple. I wouldn't even call it a calculation or an equation because you're just pushing a button on your calculator. Similarly, 
If I know the hydroxide ion concentration in the center here, I can take its negative log and come up with the pOH. Now let's look how pH and pOH are related. Um, up on top here, if we find any pH, say pH 3, which is lower than 7, meaning an acidic solution, the corresponding pOH will be 11. There is a pattern there, always. The pH plus the pOH always equals 14 in a, in a solution. It's pH plus its pOH equals the number 14. Again, not it's much too simple even to be considered an equation of sorts, but, uh, but really uh, it, it, it's almost uh, uh, ridiculous to think about. It's that easy. Now, notice, uh, we'll go back to uh, pH for a moment. Our neutral is seven. Now, as we go down in pH, see these sequential numbers going down, that means we become more and more acidic. That's a little counterintuitive for people that are used to hearing about pH and, and its relation to acidity, in that we have a, uh, if, if, some, if the number is going down, uh, the initial thought is, sort of, well, the, the, the acidity must be going down too. It is not, it's the reverse of that. As the pH goes down, the acidity uh, uh, of the solution goes up from weakly acidic to strongly acidic. Alternatively, if we have our, our, our pH 7 neutral and we start increasing in pH number, now we're on the basic side and the, into weakly basic, the higher the numbers we get into, strongly basic. What does this mean, acidic and basic? We're talking about ultimately the more basic we get, the the greater the concentration of hydroxide ion. The more acidic we get, the greater the concentration of hydronium ion. So we have these, uh, these expressions down here. Again, I hesitate to call them uh, equations because they're really, again, just mashing up a number on, on, your, on your calculator to relate uh, pH and pOH with the concentrations of those two all important ions. So we can very easily uh, use these expressions for some example problems. For instance, if the hydronium ion concentration of a, of a solution is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar, what is the pH? Not even an equation. Just take that number, put it into your calculator, and, uh, and, and punch log, and then take the, uh, the, the reverse of it in, in your mind. Uh, and the, the answer that comes out, um, well, here we show that this logarithmic uh, function happening, but this is the number that comes out, 3.74. It's that simple. Um, if we look at, uh, for hydroxide ion concentration, it's the same thing. If my hydroxide ion concentration is 7.69 times 10 to the minus 2 molar, what is the pOH? Well, just take that number and uh, in your calculator and punch uh, log, taking the negative in your mind, and we end up with another number, and that would be the pOH of a solution. Now, just as we were able to uh, calculate, uh, go in one direction, if I have hydronium or hydroxide ion concentration in solution, I can uh, take the negative log of that number and come up with a pH or pOH. We can go back the other way as well. If we're given a pH or pOH, we can back calculate and be given the uh, hydronium ion concentration as well through the expressions that, uh, that we see in bold here. The hydronium ion concentration, if we know the pH, would be 10 to the negative of that, uh, of that pH, that exponent. So your calculator has a function for that. It's really that easy. Similarly, with the hydroxide ion, uh, to, to calculate that, if we know the pOH of the solution, well, we set base 10 to the negative of whatever that pOH is, and we're able to, uh, to, to find that very easily. Here's a couple of uh, example problems. Again, I hesitate to call them problems because they're so straightforward. If the pH is 4.80 of a solution, what is its hydronium ion concentration? Well, I'm just going to take 10 and set it to the exponent, 4 point, negative 4.80, and come out with 1.59 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. It's very straightforward. 
If the pOH of a solution is 8.10, what's the hydroxide ion concentration? Same thing. We set, we set uh, base 10 to the exponent of the negative of that, uh, that pOH, and th th this is what comes out of our calculator. Um, so we're very easily able to uh, swap between them. So now we have enough information uh, and, and the ability to transcribe between the, all of these values that we can actually make a loop out of it. It's called the pH loop. So that if I know, for instance, one value in a solution, I can calculate uh, all of the others. And it doesn't matter which value uh, I'm dealing with because we have uh, doorways between each of these values. For instance, between the hydronium and ion concentration and pH, we have uh, a two-way street. We, uh, we take the uh, uh, negative log of hydronium ion concentration, that gives us pH. And what, if we have the pH and want to calculate hydronium ion concentration, we set that pay, negative pH to base 10. And the exact same thing can be said for hydroxide ion concentration and the pOH, exactly the same thing as I just said above for the relationship between hydronium ion concentration and pH. So we have these two sort of lateral components to the pH loop. But let's look now at uh, the constant that at the, we, what we've already worked on as the relationship between hydronium ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration. Well, remember, they are relatable because their product in any solution equals 10 to the minus 14th. And lastly, the pH and pOH are relatable by a very simple expression that the pH plus the pOH equals 14. It's that simple. So now we, can, we have all of these uh, uh, different uh, values here, these, these uh, uh, doorways, if you will, between all of these different values uh, so we can mathematically, if given one, calculate all the rest of them. So let's look at an, uh, an, an example of this. 1.10 grams of NaOH, that's a strong base, dissolved in water to a final volume of 1.75 liters. What are hydronium ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, the pH, and the pOH of the resulting solution? Seems daunting, doesn't it? Well, let's, uh, since we're dealing with sodium hydroxide, and we know, and I told you that's a strong base, we can say that, well, my guess is we're probably going to be finding the hydroxide ion concentration first. I think we will be, since we're dealing with a hydroxide salt. But to, to do that, a concentration is moles per one liter, moles of hydroxide. Uh, well, in this case, sodium hydroxide is not in moles, but rather in grams. So we have to do our old, uh, old classic, when in doubt, convert to moles, and we're going to do that with our NaOH. We have, we have 1.1 grams of NaOH, and if we divide by our uh, molar mass of NaOH, it comes out with the number of moles. Now, that's the total number of moles. It's not the molarity, because the molarity is, molarity is the number of moles per one liter of solution. In fact, well, that's the number of moles right in front of us per 1.75 liters solution. So we have to force this into compliance by dividing 0 0.0275 moles of, of NaOH by 1.75 liters of solution to force us into molarity. And that comes out to 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2 molar of sodium hydroxide. Now, when uh, so, so sodium hydroxide is a hydroxide salt, it is a strong base, so thus, whatever the concentration we have here of sodium hydroxide is also the concentration of hydroxide ion, because it dissociates completely, if you remember that, from the last lecture. So we've got one of our four corners of the pH loop, and this hydroxide ion concentration. And really, it's up to us which way we want to go with this. So here's our pH loop, and we're down in the... Uh, sort of the, the southwestern area right here with hydroxide, which way should we go? 
Well, it doesn't really matter. I think uh, what, we, what, what we want to try to find now, or I, I'm choosing to, is hydronium ion concentration. And that uh, it involves uh, our product of uh, hydroxide and hydronium uh, multiplied together to give 10 to the minus 14th. So we're going to do that. And we, uh, we set this up so that hydro our hydronium ion is all by itself on one side. Uh, divided by our hydroxide ion concentration that we just uh, that we just worked out, and this comes out to the uh, hydronium ion concentration 6.37 times 10 to the minus 13th molar. Well, we've done our uh, heavy lifting in my view, so let's uh, come up with a, we need to find the pH and the pOH. pH the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which we just calculated. We put that in, uh, take the negative log on that and punch it into our calculator, and it comes out to tw the pH is 12.20. That was easy. And then finally, uh, to calculate the pOH, we just subtract 12.20 from 14, because that is the relationship we have there, and it comes out to 1.80. So let's change direction a little bit here. Um, we're still talking about acids and bases, but we have to think about the action of acids or bases added to, say, uh, a neutral solution of pure water. I really only have to add a very little bit of a strong acid or a strong base to uh, an aqueous solution to get a wide swing in pH. If I have pH 7 and I add just a little bit of concentrated strong acid, the pH will dive down to uh, the low single digits. It's, very, it's called a pH shock to a system. Similarly, if I have uh, a, a neutral uh, solution or a pure water at pH 7 and I add just a little bit of strong base, that pH will shock that system way up to you know, 12, 13, P or pH 14. This is again known as a pH shock. Um, in living systems, pH shocks uh, are, are detrimental. They, they are, are life-threatening. So much of, uh, of living biochemistry or, or of biology is mediated by what are called buffers. Uh, natural buffers. Our bloodstream has a natural buffer in it, so any uh, added acid or base uh, does not provide a, give a pH shock to our bloodstream, but only uh, ends up with little shifts in pH by comparison. So by definition, a buffer is a solution which resists pH change, or rather radical pH change, by neutralizing added strong acid or strong base. Uh, the way they're put together, there are hundreds of different types of buffers, but they're all constructed uh, the same way. They're uh, constructed by forming an aqueous solution of a weak acid and the salt of that weak acid's conjugate base. And we'll see why that is. So we have to have a weak acid. So if we start with pure water, here's pure water, and we first have to add uh, a weak acid to it. We'll add acetic acid because we're sort of familiar with that. That was that monoprotic acid, which had actually four hydrogens on it, but only one is, uh, is ionizable. Not that that's what makes acetic acid weak, but it's just we, it's good to stick with this once we have in there. So here's a representation of that pure water where we've added our weak acid. And remember, the weak acid dissociates hardly at all. Uh, so it remains uh, within solution in its undissociated state, meaning its acidic hydrogen is still attached. After this, we add a, uh, the salt of that acetic acid's conjugate base, and it's usually like uh, we, with that uh, hydrogen removed, uh, we have, uh, like in this case, a sodium salt uh, called sodium acetate in this case, but it is the conjugate base of that weak acid. So we have this whole solution here, and I'm going to demonstrate why that is helpful. Why does that reduce, resist radical pH change upon addition of a strong acid or a strong base? So let's imagine uh, a system uh, in which we are, we're going to be adding uh, a, a, some strong acid to it. If I just had water, for instance, just water, there's water up, up, up right, right in there, and I add HCl, which is a strong acid directly to it. 
Well, that uh, water molecule is going to act like a base and abstract that hydrogen ion from the HCl quantitatively. Remember, strong acid dissociates completely, so that's going to form plenty of hydronium ion. Hydronium ion is the business end of any aqueous acid, and also that's going to shock our system. We're going to get a, a very, very a low pH as a result of that because we have hydronium ion all over the place. Well, let's see what happens now when we have water with, uh, within our buffer system. And remember, there's two components to a buffer. And in this case, it is the, uh, the uh, conjugate base of the strong acid which, uh, which attacks the added HCl first. It does not allow the water to attack it. Thus, we're, uh, we, we get this, uh, the, the hydrogen on the HCl abstracted by the conjugate base added to it. So there's no hydronium ion formed. If there's no hydronium ion formed, uh, or hardly any, it is only weakly acidic. So it only moderately lowers the pH because, as we can see uh, in both of these cases, on the top case, lots of hydronium ion. On the bottom case, no, we just have water here. That hydrogen from the acid went to the conjugate base of the weak acid, and thus we resist that uh, shock to the system, that very low pH we got in the first case. So let's talk about bases next. If we have a base, which, so we'll talk about strong base, which would perhaps be a hydroxide salt, which we're used to, in this case, sodium hydroxide is solid. And if we put this into water, well, that dissociates completely to give a uh, hydroxide ion as the big player. Remember, hydroxide ion is the business end of any base. And the more of it we have kicking around, the, the higher that pH is going to shock. So we got a lot of hydroxide produced means it's very basic and it severely increases the pH of, of the, compared with the solution before we added the NaOH. Well, let's see what happens in our buffer. And in this case, it is our uh, acetic acid itself, the weak acid that uh, comes to the rescue. It, when sodium hydroxide is, uh, is, is dissolved in the uh, in, in, the, in the solution, we get hydroxide formed for a split second, but then we have that hydroxide ion uh, attacks the very acidic hydrogen on the weak acid. And what do we get from that? That hydroxide ion that is so basic turns into harmless old water. And all that is left is, again, a, the conjugate acid of that weak acid. And as, as a result, there's no hydroxide present, so only weakly basic, moderately increasing the pH. So in both cases, whether we're adding uh, additional strong acid or adding additional strong base, we, uh, both, both of the components of that buffer, depending on which is added, neutralize those, uh, those business ends of any acid, being the hydronium, or any base, being the hydroxide. So let's take a look at uh, ultimately how this works out. If I have, so this is more of a pictorial representation. If I have a, a, a pure water with a pH of seven and I have my buffer, and the pH of this might be around 4.75. It's not that important. Different buffers have initial starting pHs, so you can pick and choose uh, which buffers you want to use if you're running biochemistry experiments that perhaps uh, simulate uh, the, the in, inside of cells or in the bloodstream or something like that, that have different initial pHs to them. So what we're going to do is just, just recognize that we have uh, uh, our two different initial pHs and look at what happens when we, uh, when, we, when we add strong acid in this case. We add strong acid, HCl, to that pure water and we might we get a, sh a shock to that system and perhaps it goes down a small amount of HCl, perhaps it, it shock, shocks that pH down to pH 1, perhaps. That's a, shock, a pH shock, six uh, pH units. Whereas in the buffer, if I added that same HCl, well, 
we would go down in pH, but look, hardly any at all. 4.75 maybe to 4.66 maybe. I'm not sure of this. This is just sort of a, a qualitative demonstration. But the, the depth or the breadth of which we get these different changes or the comparison uh, is, is certainly sound. Let's look at us adding a strong base to both pure water and our buffer system. If I added sodium hydroxide base to that pH 7 pure water, that is going to shock the system to give perhaps a pH much higher, maybe 13 or something like that, because there's lots of hydroxide produced. Whereas in the buffer, if I have added NaOH, well, that hydroxide is gobbled up, as we saw on the previous slide, and we only have a very small increase. It's still an increase, but very small increase in pH. Again, I'm not certain of these numbers, but the, the spirit of the argument is there. Thus, a buffer, whether we're adding a strong acid or a strong base, uh, ends up with uh, uh, preventing uh, the pH shock to the systems that you'd get just adding strong acid or strong base to pure water.